Okay, so this one is about the orthographic of your object and also the axonometric and the exploded. And again, it's February 7th, Monday. Um, so this is the example that, that's in Eiler, you know, pretty straightforward iPod uh, Nano, I guess, Mini, I can't remember. Um, so these drawings are all going to be freehand with maybe some uh, touch up with a straight edge, but let's do them all freehand because I want you guys to really practice drawing freehand. So let's do tools. Um, and in this drawing, just put some, some dimensions. So essentially, this is one thing that this one is missing is the little, um, should have little labels for the various parts. Okay. Uh, just once again, pay attention to alignment so that this is all aligned and also pay attention to relationship between the views so that obviously this kind of works together, right? I mean, if, if you're, um, you know, if this thing was here, that would obviously wouldn't make much sense, right? Okay. So in terms of this object, yeah, let's talk about that. Do, just do anything. Your phone is fine. Your phone might be really complex, like really complicated. Uh, the iPhone, the old one is also complicated. The new one is less because it's kind of square and, um, and it has a straight side. Um, the, uh, the old one, the one I have, is a little bit complicated because the curve is very complex, right? So, nevertheless, you know, see how adventurous you are and pick something that does have some interesting features. Um, and of course, I'm not going to ask you to take it apart to do the exploded view. <laughs> You're going to have to kind of, you know, imagine it. Or maybe you find, you know, a picture on the internet that, that shows those parts. So orthographic, pretty straightforward. Um, oh yeah, I brought a tool. Let me see if I find it. Um, what you need to do to do this drawing is to figure out how big, how big the object is, okay? And one way to do that is to have a caliper, which is a nice tool. This is a really old-fashioned one, mechanical. And I can measure, for example, what the diameter of this object is. And now, looks like, I think this is, I don't know what this is. I just picked this up, I can't remember. It's, it's about a quarter of an inch. Uh, this may be millimeters. Anyway, this is a tool that allows you to like, take very precise measurements. Uh, otherwise, just you know, take, a, take a ruler and measure. And uh, once you have all your parts, you could do a quick sketch to show, you know, like how big this thing is, because you'll need it later when you do your uh, orthographics as well. It's it's tough to measure things when they're round, right? Because it's tough to um, to see where you know where the curve ends. So that's why a caliper is useful. Okay, so not much about the orthographic except that once again, let's say that your right view is the view that you know you would see if you go around the object and you look at it from that side, go around to the right. And if you're going around to the left, that would be the left view. Okay? This being the front. Okay, now on the axonometric, um, once again, we should stick to, um, well, actually, this could be a little more free. Let's just say that if you want, you can stick to isometric. Okay, so that's 30-30. Um, in this one, this person did something a little bit different. Okay, so they almost kept this 
front square. Like if this was a square, it would be like that, which wouldn't be so great. It's nice that it has a little bit more flattened view. Okay? So, but you notice though that he did keep his verticals vertical, which is nice. So in relationship to the drawing, okay, these are all vertical. And he drew the box, because it's a complicated shape, he drew it for a square. Okay, so that's a square, and this is all square. So that's something important. Now keep in mind that uh, once you do something like this, which it did, you can also then turn it or set another way. This is a slight different one. Uh, the angles here are more like probably 40 and 40. And so he drew it here and then uh, it turned it, right? So in the drawing it appears to float in the air, which is okay. That's kind of fun actually. Uh, so to draw it that way, you probably can just, you know, move the sheet around and, you know, and then decide which angle you like. Okay. Um, just very quickly, oh, by the way, some notes that are already in iLearn have, um, like, yellow stickies, you know, these kind of things, so that if you look at it in iLearn, I wrote down a bunch of notes about these things in the file, but these don't print, I believe, so when you look at it, you have to um, open it up in Acrobat and not in Explore, in, uh, in the browser, otherwise this thing covers up the actual drawing, okay? But look for those, because it's, it's, it's very detailed. Um, essentially, if you have curves, think of them as they're likely to be like uh, quarter circles of large, you know, of larger circles. Um, let's say this might be uh, an iPhone, you know, four. Okay. So if you break it down in those components, uh, it becomes easier to manage. Uh, this is just a little aside about the golden section. I'm not gonna. Uh, this is unrelated, but um, you, you might find that in some objects or in nature there is this proportion that happens a lot, which is that it's a relationship between the whole and the parts, where the bigger part is to the smaller part. Um, no, let's see, where the total is to the bigger part, as the bigger part is to the smaller part. Okay, and that proportion is about 0.618. So it's out of focus. Guys, you have to tell me if stuff is out of focus. Okay. Uh, once again, which view is which? Um, let's talk about scale for a moment. So if your object, of course, is like, your object probably will fit in your uh, sheet, but maybe not, so you might need to reduce it. So if you do that, um, keep in mind that when you write your dimensions, you're going to still write the real dimensions. So let's say maybe this is five inches, okay? Whereas in reality now, it's an inch and a half. So that makes it about one to three, the scale. Um, so for example, six inches, in real life, which would be this, if I reduce it and I use three-quarter scale, which you could find on your scale or on the one that you can borrow here, which, what you do here is look for six inches. So that's three-quarter, you can, can't read it there, but that's three-quarter, so you start here at zero, go down and count six. Okay, so that's still six inches, but at three-quarter scale, all right? So you might want to practice using the scale a little bit. Okay, very quickly, there is another um, 
there's still the old same old tutorial about ellipses in perspective and I recommend you guys look at that. Um, there's a whole discussion about how, you know, again, an ellipse is not really a circle in perspective, but nevertheless, we kind of take to this for our purposes. And the main thing to remember is that your ellipses, if you have an object that's like cylindrical, so I have a cylinder here. cylinder, um, the axis is going to be the short as axis of the ellipse matches the longer axis of that cylinder that it belongs to, okay, that the circle belongs to. Uh, but essentially if you have a, an object like a, an iPhone or an iPod or a pencil sharpener, you'll find that a lot of details are really circles and parts of circles. So what you need to do is you need to build up this object with these ellipses, okay, or circles rather. Um, so if I have my iPhone, which I don't yet, the four, um, obviously those are four corners. And I say obviously, but you know, maybe they're not. I, I, knowing Apple, I'm pretty sure they're probably real circles. <laughs> So when you do your isometric, you uh, build up these little areas, okay? Starting with proportions, you know? So if this object is maybe divided into four parts and the fourth core part is a circle, you would do that on your, on your isometric. Uh, I'm not doing this right, this is actually bigger. Okay, so that essentially you have a series of uh, circles represented by ellipses. In this uh, little detail here, which would be, say, my original iPod, I'm showing that the scroll wheel, uh, which is a circle, belongs to this cylinder. Okay. And so that cylinder, the big axis on that cylinder is going this way. It happens to match my verticals in my drawing. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my ellipse perfectly horizontal, if you will. That means that the opposite axis is going to be like this. So in a drawing like this, where these are my verticals, this ellipse cannot be like that. Okay? Just cannot. And I was just saying here, all these are all wrong. And cannot be like that either. It has to be like this, okay? Where this is horizontal. Uh, that's something that it kind of, I had a discussion with a friend of mine who we used to work at the company, and I was saying, well, but it could be at an angle. No, no, it's always, in other words, a circle in perspective is always like this if it's parallel to your ground, okay? It's never at an angle like that. Uh, no, I lost because I was I was kind of questioning, and it just said no. It's this was 10, 15 years ago. I said no. It's always that's always the axis. Otherwise, it looks funny. If if that plane that the circle belongs to is parallel to the ground, and you can kind of try it. I mean, you could just put you know a circle on a f on a table and and kind of you know lower it. You know, if I put a disc here, let's say it's a plate, and I'm standing here. And then maybe I'm, you know, going down. So no matter how I look, this view of this object is always going to be like this. It's never going to be like this relative to my eye, uh, cone, to my cone of vision. Can I see it? Yeah. So that's, that's something to remember. Uh, now, things can get a little complicated if, for example, Say you have a flip phone, and you know you have nice, nice curves which are like this. Okay, so these are all nice and horizontal. Well, now all of a sudden you have this part that flips up like that. 
So now the question is, well this is on the square, but the question then becomes, it's probably not like this here. It's probably, let's see, we'd have to, we'd have to really look at it, but it's going to change slightly because it's not, um, it's not horizontal anymore, okay? So that, those are fine, the flip phones are fine, <laughs> if, you're, if you're gonna try it, you know, open. And by fine, I mean they're difficult. <laughs> um, okay, so this drawing just shows once more, um, if you do your phone like this, maybe like standing up, uh, how would you build it? You know, again, the same iPhone example. Um, <clears throat> what I would do here is again establish how big that circle is. Uh, that's the square that it's contained in. I mean, and then this would be the cylinder that that circle belongs to. So when I draw it, now I'm going to turn the paper and draw it like this. Now it's kind of getting a little messy, but the thing to remember is that I'm going to just, just use one little bit of that circle. I'm going to use from there to there, like that. On the opposite side, it's going to be... different section of that circle, it's going to be this section as the circle. Okay, so I take that, then here, and then like that. Okay. Um, so this just shows different ways you could show it. I mean, you could show it like this again, like forward, you know, with the face forward straight, but again, that's a little bit like cheating because all you're doing is you're taking the orthographic and just extruding it, right? So that's not so interesting. Um, here I was trying to, I was attempting to show how you would build, um, you know, an iPhone 3G, you know, not the 4, which has a very complicated shape because it goes you know, it goes like this, and then it comes down, then it tapers off, and it probably... So it's like, oh my gosh, you know, where are all these circles, right? Because you could have so many slices and define it by all these slices. So it's possible, and if you do um, contour lines to help you visualize it, it's, it's better. So this is the example. Now this person had already done rapid viz. Okay, so this person already had a pretty good sense of like how to do, you know, light lines, how to go over with darker lines, how to cross your lines, etc., etc. Um, and in the end, actually, he didn't use straight lines, but you could still use straight lines on the on a drawing like this. If you want, you can use a different pencil than like black. So this person used the dark blue, which is really nice, um, so that way you might be a little more uh, free. And I don't know if he actually drew the parts underneath and then, uh, you know, and then erased them. It doesn't look like, I think he, he might have done this drawing on a different uh, piece of paper and then on an overlay, uh, kept just what he needed. It's nice here, actually does it. He really shows the overlap, but he didn't do it so much here. So, okay, but you can see the, uh, all the ellipses are nice and, nice and straight, okay. So this is now also next week. Uh, the important part is that, again, things match, obviously. It's, See how these parts fit one on top of the other nicely. Um, for example, this part fits here. It's going to go right there. Okay, we're almost done. Um, 
just some more lips practices and um, again this is isometric just because it's easier because it's easier to draw this ellipse which is nice and you know the proportions of this ellipse are about two to one Because if you try to do one that's, you know, almost like a circle, it becomes pretty hard to do. Okay, that's the last drawing, and uh, it's just showing how the exploded could be built. Uh, if you want, you could use a triangle and a straight edge to um, figure out all these, like, different floors, you know, these different layers. So you almost make almost like a three-dimensional grid for yourself, where you're going to put the parts. And uh, that's it. Do you have any questions before I turn off the camera? No? Okay. Good. So that's the end of that.